Welcome back to The Haunted Beard, everybody. My name is Jake. Thank you for joining me. So the first Omen just became available on Hulu. And this is a film that when it was uh, initially announced, didn't really have all that much interest in seeing it. It just kind of looked like another pretty standard generic prequel type movie. But then the film came out and some of the reviews were pretty positive. At least some of the people that I like to watch on YouTube were pretty positive about it. So I decided I would give it a watch and I'm glad I did. Now this is the feature film debut from uh, the director Arkasha Stevenson. And she shows quite a bit of promise here. Uh, this is obviously by no means a perfect film. I do have my issues with it, but in terms of how she executes uh, a lot of the horror scenes, they're pretty well done. I'm not going to bore you with a plot synopsis. This is the prequel story to this movie right here, The Origin of Damien. So the movie opens up and the opening like seven minutes is extremely effective and well done and just hooks you right into this thing. It gives us some nice imagery, some nice atmosphere, just some ominous, you know, kind of creepy atmosphere. And then also we get uh, an opening kill that is kind of reminiscent to one of the kills in the original film. Then we're introduced to our main character, Margaret, played by Nell Tiger Free. And she is definitely one of the best aspects of this film. And in thinking about it, she's probably one of the best horror performances I've seen so far this year. She plays a young American woman who is sent to Rome to serve the Catholic Church at this orphanage. And of course, things develop and take a dark and sinister turn. And like I said, she just does a really great job with this role here. And really, there is kind of two aspects to her performance that I think she just executes really well. There's definitely this psychological aspect where you kind of see her psychological state start to deteriorate as she starts uncovering some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, and then, you know, it more and more involves her. And so just the, the, the fear, the anxiety, the mental stress and everything. But then there's also a, a physical element to it as well. And particularly there's a scene later on towards the end of the movie where Man, just the, the the physicality of her performance, I thought was just excellent in this specific scene. And I don't want to give any more details away just in case you haven't seen it. But I'll just say this, though. It is, I think, a little bit reminiscent of uh, Isabel Ajani's performance in the movie Possession. Came out in the 80s. Yeah, there is a scene that Nell Tiger Free has in this movie that is a, a little bit reminiscent of Isabel Ajani in that movie in the subway. And it gets pretty intense and pretty crazy. But yeah, she just really nails the physicality aspect of her performance as well as just the emotional and mental aspect as well. I thought she just did a really good job. Now, while the first Omen is one of the better prequels, it still suffers from some of the typical prequel issues that a lot of prequel movies suffer from. And namely, uh, a lot of the story just kind of feels familiar and it feels somewhat predictable to where I felt like really the first half of the movie, uh, a lot of it kind of feels uneventful and, and a little bit unnecessary. And, and so that kind of leads into some of the issues with just the pacing of the film as well. This movie is two hours and it just really doesn't need to be. This movie could probably be a tight 90 minutes and it would be all the better for it. And, and in addition to that, given the fact that it's a prequel, we ultimately kind of know where the story's headed. And so especially for that first hour of the film, we as the audience feel like we're at least a step, if not two steps ahead of the characters in the movie. And so it, it just kind of, it, it feels a, a tad slow and a tad boring because we're just kind of waiting for the characters to get caught up to where we know it's ultimately going to get to. And then that kind of leads into some of the predictability of it, right? I mean, we we know where the story's going, and so we're just kind of sitting there waiting. And, and a lot of it, too, really kind of feels devoid of conflict. 
And so th there's just not a whole lot happening in that opening 60 minutes to really get us invested. Luckily, the second half kind of provides a bit of the, the jump start that we needed and, and kind of gets things moving, introduces some conflict. And it, it, you know, it just it helps. The pacing kind of picks up. We're moving forward. We feel like, you know, more of the story is developing and the movie just starts moving along. And so I'm, I'm definitely mixed as far as the story goes. But Overall, though, I was extremely impressed with how well the horror sequences are executed in this movie to the point where if they weren't executed to the degree that they are, this would be one that I feel like would just kind of disappear amongst the large heap of kind of forgettable prequels. But the horror in this movie is executed extremely well that I think it really ultimately saves the film and it made it into something that I would definitely recommend. And the credit is largely due to Stevenson. And she has just got some real talent there in the director's seat and just how she puts constructs these scenes together. Just a, a really good visual eye too and is able to just craft some excellent horror sequences. There's a scene earlier on involving a birth that is pretty disturbing and gets more graphic than I expected. And there's some sequences later on in that second half. The, the second half of this film really, I think, saves the entire movie. And there are a few scenes in the second half that are just excellent, very memorable. There's probably a couple scenes in here that I think will be vying for one of the, the top 10 kind of horror movie moments of the year, at least in my opinion. Believe it or not, there's actually a couple jump scares in this movie that I think are executed pretty well. Uh, a large part of the effectiveness too, not only to Stevenson regarding the horror scenes, but also to Free. Again, her performance just really sells it. And Man, there's just some good stuff. I mean, just just good atmosphere. It's it's tense. It's scary. It's creepy. There's just some nice, disturbing imagery, and I like some of the restraint that is shown as well. Because this could be a case to where if if you show something too much, it kind of loses its impact and stuff like that. And so I like the restraint there. Just some really nice visuals to it all. Just kind of that soft candle glow lighting that accompanies a lot of the film. It just really works. I was just very, very impressed with some of the horror sequences in this film. Overall, despite some of the story and narrative issues that I have and some pacing issues, uh, I'm still on the positive side because the horror in this movie is it's saving grace. It saves the movie. And so, yeah, there is some familiarity here. There is some predictability here, but... If you want to see some good horror sequences, definitely check out First Omen if you haven't yet. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm going to give First Omen between like a six and a half to a seven, somewhere right in there. So uh, I would recommend it if it's something you're interested in checking out. I think it is worth your time. Those are my thoughts. Also, like I said, it is streaming right now on Hulu, so go check it out. So those are my thoughts. Hit me up down below. Let me know your thoughts. Would love to hear from you. Once again, thank you for watching. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.